Meet Jack and Jill. They're married with two kids and together make $49,000 a year, about the middle American income. But like 15 million people with similar incomes, they don't have health insurance. Not good if you're worried about <gasps> falling down a hill. Under the new law, Jack and Jill are winners. They can buy private insurance from what's called an exchange starting in two years. The idea is that lots of people buying at the same time would get a better price. And the plans have to meet minimum standards set by the government. Jack and Jill would also get a subsidy to help them buy their plan. Mary only makes $13,000 selling little lambs. She's also a winner. She can get insurance under an expansion of Medicaid. 17 million Americans like her will be eligible for that. And about 51,000 kids with pre-existing conditions like Cancel and Gretel are also winners. They can't be denied coverage. And all kids can stay on their parents' insurance till they're 26. Where does the money come from? Well, that brings us to the losers, including the roughly 19% of Americans who have high-cost, gold-plated health care plans, like Prince Charming here. Starting in 2018, that fancy plan he gets from his job at the castle would be taxed at 40 percent. He will also see his payroll taxes go up, like the three million other Americans who make more than $200,000 a year. Also on the losing end, companies like Fairy Godmother Industries. It employs more than 50 people making glass slippers. So it has to offer insurance or pay a fine. 94% of similar size companies already do, so only a small number would pay more under the new law. We end this story with a toss-up. Insurance companies would both win and lose. They'll have to pay the government more than $8 billion a year, but they get up to 40 million new customers like Jack and Jill, who by law must get insurance or pay a penalty. Lizzie O'Leary, CNN.